Sky Boys by Deborah Hopkinson. It's the end of winter, and your pop's lost his job. So every morning before school, you scour the streets for firewood, hunched down in an icy wind. But look, here's a pile of wood, free for the taking, all carted off from that old hotel they tore down at 34th and 5th. Six hundred men are working there, leveling, shoveling, hauling, clearing the rubble away. They're getting ready to make something new. Bold, soaring, a symbol of hope in the darkest of times. A building, clean and simple and straight as a pencil, and tall, so tall it will scrape the sky. You drag your pop along to see and tell him what you've heard on the street. Mr. Raskob wants to build the tallest skyscraper in the world, you say. Taller even than Mr. Chrysler's building. They say it'll be done by next May. Think they can build it that fast, Pop? Things are so bad, it seems foolish to even try, he replies. Then he sees your face and adds, Of course, you never know. So let the race begin. First come rumbling flatbed trucks, bundles of steel on their backs, like a gleaming endless river surging through the concrete canyons of Manhattan. This steel is strong and new, only 80 hours old, barely cooled from the fiery furnaces of Pittsburgh. Before your eyes, a steel forest appears. 210 massive columns, lifted by derricks and set onto concrete piers, sunk 55 feet down to hard rock bottom. Columns so firm and strong, they can bear the full weight of this giant to be, 365,000 tons. Then it's the Sky Boys show. Derrick men hoisting, swinging, easing each beam into place. High overhead they crawl like spiders on steel, spinning their giant web in the sky. Watch out, Sky Boys. Don't slip in the rain, or let the wind whisk you away. Wouldn't you love to be one of them, the breeze in your face, and your muscles as strong as the girder you ride? Or you could be a water boy, climbing high with your bucket to bring the Sky Boys a drink. They'd laugh and call out, Keep your eyes on the beam, water boy, and don't look down. As each beam is placed, the riveting gang is there to fasten the frame together. Four men work as one. First man, the heater, gets the rivet red hot in the forge and tosses it up quick. A throw of 50 feet is nothing to him. Second man, the catcher, snares the rivet in his funneled tin can, fishes it out with tongs, and sticks it in the hole. Third man, the bucker up, keeps the rivet nice and steady with his bar. Fourth man, the gunman, hammers it into the steel good and hard. Toss, catch, steady, pound. Toss, catch, steady, pound. One or two rivets a minute, 500 rivets a day. At the same time, other workers use six hoists to carry 80,000 pound loads of wood and steel right to where they're needed. And on each floor, hand-powered rail cars on tracks move limestone, pipes, and wires around. To make the work easier, there are temporary elevators, water tanks, and yes, toilets, five lunch stands, and even a restaurant. No need to leave the job. Get hot beef stew and coffee here on the unfinished 47th floor. In this new ingenious assembly line construction, each man works as fast as he can, knowing that down below, a hundred jobless men 
are ready to take over his spot in a flash. Yet knowing, too, that the quicker he finishes, the sooner he'll be back in line himself, waiting and desperate for work. From your spot on the sidewalk, you watch the building take shape. Bit by bit, piece by piece, like a giant real-life puzzle, rising four and a half stories each week. In November, the Sky Boys give a cheer. The skeleton has a skin. All 102 stories are done. And by March, the mast on top makes this the tallest building in the world. Like a general launching an attack, the builder sends in more men. Bricklayers, masons, carpenters, electricians, plumbers, all hammering, nailing, wiring, and cutting, morning till night, week after week, month after month. May 1st, 1931, opening day. Finished in record time, 60,000 tons of steel, 10 million bricks, 2,000 tons of marble, 6,500 windows, 70 miles of water pipes, 860 stairs, one year and 45 days, 7 million man hours, more than 3,000 men, a triumph of speed, safety, and efficiency, and something else too, beauty. The ribbon is cut, the crowds swarm in. Amazing, spectacular, now the world can see what New York City's all about. Outside, Pop has a big surprise. Let's go on up, he suggests with a grin. I've been putting our pennies aside. The crowd sweeps you into the marble lobby. A tall, grand lady, clothed in head to toe in rich, glowing colors. On the center wall, a silhouette glitters like a jewel. The Empire State Building, pride of New York City. To go to the top, it's a buck for adults, two bits for kids. Hop on board for the longest elevator ride of your life. Just swallow if your ears start to hurt. In no time, you're there. But even on tiptoe, you can't see a thing. Then whoosh, you're up on Pop's back. Gee whiz, you shout. We're on top of the world. Pop shakes his head, disbelieving. If we can do this, we can do anything, he says. Itching to see it all, you jump down and race around the deck. North and south and east and west. All Manhattan lies at your feet. Say, Pop, you call. Do you think there's a kid just like me way down there looking at us up here? After a while, the sun slips away. Tiny lights and stars flicker on. Bright threads of taxis lace the darkness below. The great city shimmers and hums. All around, folks are starting to leave. You beg, please, Pop. A few minutes more? But it's time. So with one last look, you head down to earth. On the long walk home, you're fuzzy with sleep, holding tight to your father's rough hand. But then at the corner, you turn and stop short in surprise. Look, Pop, we can still see it from here. Oh, how it lights up the night. Architect William Lamb based his design for the Empire State Building along the simple, clean lines of a pencil. At 1,250 feet high, it was the world's tallest building at the time by about 200 feet. The project provided thousands of jobs for the Sky Boys in the middle of the Great Depression, and it became a beacon of hope and a triumph of American engineering. Let's construct our own skyscraper. 
We'll start by making some shapes out of the gumdrops and toothpicks. How about a square? Four gumdrops and four toothpicks gives us our square, but it's only one dimensional and we want to build up. So let's turn our one dimensional square into a three dimensional cube. At each corner of the square, attach a toothpick facing up. And add a gumdrop to the end of each toothpick. And add a toothpick between each pair of gumdrops. Take a look at the finished cube. Count how many gumdrops and toothpicks you had to use to make this shape. Look at the angles in the cube. They are all right angles. The challenge with building very tall buildings like skyscrapers is that you have to balance the height of the structure with the weight that it can support. Did you know that there's a geometric shape even stronger than a cube? Let's make it! We'll start by making a triangle. Again, this shape is one-dimensional. Let's make it 3D. Add a toothpick to each gumdrop, angled up and towards the center. Join them all with a gumdrop at the top, and we've created a pyramid. What do you notice about this shape? How many gumdrops did we have to use, and how many toothpicks? Do you think it's more efficient? It's not quite as tall, but it is much stronger. Let's test our shapes. Lay the weight of your hand on the cube. It doesn't take much to flatten this shape. How about the pyramid? This shape is much stronger. It would take a lot more force to push it over. Now that we've done some experimenting, it's time to build our skyscraper. You can make a sketch first, or just wing it. Think about the geometric shapes we used before, and try adapting them in your tower. How can you get the height that you want to achieve? How much weight can your skyscraper design support? How can you use your materials efficiently and stretch them further? These are all problems that architects and engineers solve. Get creative, test out your skyscraper, and think about what you can do to improve your design. When you've mastered the skyscraper, try building other things, like a house or a bridge or something completely new. For architects and engineers, the sky's the limit. For more information about receiving STEAM kits in the mail, visit the Kids and Families page at coosbaylibrary.org.